What's up, guys? Welcome back to another video, and that's that's Mrs. Baltimore Retro Gaming. Say hi, everybody. Yeah, it's been another grueling week at work. Um, I'm an essential worker, and my work has been it's been hell. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. It's been uh, it's been crazy. It's been really hard, and you know I just try to try to put the next foot forward and just muscle through these weeks at work. But anyway, this is the trail I ride my bike on every week. I'm just trying to find footage of things that I do on a daily basis to try to show you guys. But yeah, this is the bike trail. You know, me and the missus, we uh, ride this, I want to say two to three times a week uh, with my work being as heavy as it is right now. Um, not so much. I'm just kind of holding my phone up, riding my bike with their hands filming this. But I got some pickups this week, some decent stuff. I got a package from a uh, Canadian gamer, so you're going to want to see that. And I also found some deer on the trail when I was riding bikes this week so I had the clip coming up here in uh, just a second you're gonna see it and these deer were like right in front of me so you know the woman's like John look so I just kind of whip my phone at and look at that right up on these deer prancing through the woods I mean there's deer everywhere on this trail Where's there's your another one there was actually like a herd of them I mean I've seen deer out here like 20 and 30 deep so it's kind of crazy but anyway let's get into these unboxings so here we have a package from Canadian Gamer and this package is not without its controversy now you know, I'm a nice guy online. You know, Canadian gamer is too. A lot of the people I talk to online, they're great people. Um, but somebody said, and it was one of Radical Rick's videos, that uh, Canadian gamer had to buy my friendship with this package. It, for one, that motherfucker, how does he even know that anyone sent me anything? And two, he ain't got to send me shit to kick it with me. Shit, that motherfucker ain't even see what I sent Canadian gamer. So, Canadian gamer, I appreciate this. And this is just one of the, it's a mini console. Let's see, it's a mini little PlayStation Mini. But I'm going to add this to the other mini consoles that I have. And I don't have them all, but I do have some of them. And the idea is to put every ROM set on this thing. So put every ROM set on the Sega Genesis Mini. Put every ROM set on the, the Turbo Mini. Put every ROM set on the PlayStation Mini. And what I mean every ROM set, I mean PAL, US, and NTSCJ. You know, NTSCU, NTSCJ, and PAL. You know, put everything on a little hard drive and be able to play the entire ROM set through this thing. That way you kind of have... You're not playing on original hardware, but you have the illusion of playing on original hardware. And I know for some people, you know, for some people, for the elitists and some of the hardcore, you know, people in the community out there, you're not going to be able to mitigate a lot of that input lag. And, you know, it's, it's, it's dealt with to the best of their ability using these emulators, but it's not that bad. Those are my other little mini consoles that I'm adding this to the lineup. And uh, Canadian Gamer, I appreciate it, man. I really do appreciate this PlayStation Mini. And I think he knew that I really wanted it, and he wasn't even using it. And as a matter of fact, they sell these at the family dollar up the street from my house. I don't know what they cost. I almost asked the cashier what they charge for these things, but when these things first came out, the fucking family dollar of all places, they got two of them. And those two PlayStation Minis have been there this entire time. And, you know, this thing looks great. This thing looks great. Look at that. It looks just the way I remember it. I had an original PlayStation when I was a kid. As a matter of fact, this kid in my neighborhood, I traded him my Sega Genesis for a PlayStation, which I, I mean, I have a Genesis now, but in, in hindsight, I guess that was a good trade because those PlayStations were going for an awful lot back then. Look, two controllers, two controllers. The Turbo Mini did not come with two controllers. That kind of, kind of sucks and it's hard to get controllers for that. And now look, here's a 32 gig flash drive and he told me this was in here. I'm assuming that he, I guess, modded this thing and downloaded up, you know, whatever. But I'm going to get into that and check it out, and hopefully I can add ROMs to it. Of course you can. I heard it's easy. But uh looks like since Canadian Gamer gave me that thumbstick, it's going to be a little bit easier for him. But anyway, my package from Canadian Gamer, the PlayStation Mini, a console that I've been wanting for a few months now. Next up, we have a couple of games that I found at a game store in Pennsylvania called Just Press Play, and this is actually at their main location it's in Lancaster, Pennsylvania in some shopping center. If you type in on Google, you type in Lancaster Shopping Center, the location that I got these games at will pop up. Anyway, Shadow of Destiny. It looked like an RPG, but from the research I did online, I haven't played this game yet, but this is like a, uh, I don't know, like an adventure game that's pretty linear. I guess it's maybe a visual novel more style of game more than it is like a actual video game. I've heard good things about it. Not a super expensive game online. It cost me about 20 bucks at the store, so... And, uh, you know, one of my buddies expressed uh, an interest in this game, so he might get sent this game because, uh, you know, it's not an RPG like I thought it was. But, you know, it's complete with its manual. It has the case, you know, not super expensive, even has the warranty card in there. So, yeah, it's a Konami game. You know, that's what I saw on the case. So I thought it might be decent. could be a great game. I don't know. But I got this game there, too, Battlecross Now. 
This is interesting. Okay, so this game wouldn't work on my Dreamcast, and it wouldn't work on my Dreamcast. I bought a new copy of this game like a year ago, and it wouldn't work or something like that, maybe less than a year. So I bought it again, forgot that it didn't work. This copy didn't work either. So I had to go to the flea market where I'm from, you know, back, back my way, and pick up another Dreamcast, and that was a chore in and of itself. This game only works with certain board revisions of the Sega Dreamcast. It's crazy. There's like no information on it online. I had to dig and dig and dig and dig and pretty much try this on like 15 or 16 different Dreamcasts before I found one that'll work. You know, hell, I, one of the Dreamcasts I actually took back to the flea market and had to trade it for another one. So it, it got kind of crazy. But I did find one that did work and I'm going to show it to you guys in just a second. But this isn't the greatest shooter. This game kind of plays like um, a vertically scrolling R-type, although you can screen, change the screen orientation to make it uh, horizontal so it'd be just like R-type, but you know, pretty decent game. You know, it was $40 brand new. You know, for a shooter, you know, not bad, at least not in my book. And it plays pretty good. You know, I got to play in this game and I need to get that, that DC Striker controller, guys. I really do. I mean, the Dreamcast, the controller, is really the shortcoming of the system, at least to me. But, you know, that DC Striker or that uh, ASCII, you know, that Japanese fight controller, I might get one of those. I'll probably get the DC Striker controller. It's 50 bucks. You know, I'll bite the bullet, 50 bucks, and then I got tons of shooters on the system. At least I'll be able to, you know, enjoy those shooters the way they're meant to be enjoyed for that $50. But I never got an arcade stick for this. I was always going to get that arcade stick uh, controller adapter to use Sega Saturn because I have a Sega Saturn stick you know there's a controller adapter you can use that Saturn stick on a Dreamcast I just never got around to getting that uh, controller adapter now that damn thing's expensive but anyway Battle Crossed and Shadow of Destiny on the PlayStation 2 and Sega Dreamcast okay guys here we have a flea market find for me this is Thunder Force 5 now I debated for god I want to see the better part of two years should I get this import on the Saturn the PS1 I just waited, and if I wanted to play it, I played it through an emulator, and I found this at the flea market. I'm always finding stuff like this at the flea market. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, this is a Working Designs release. That's awesome. It's got that shiny, reflective, metallic uh, casing that the Working Designs games are known for. And there's another game that came out that's very similar under the Spaz label. I mean, Working Designs is on there, but I know that Spaz is like more of their, uh, like their action games or whatever. But they also released uh, Raystorm on the PlayStation 1. So this is one that I actually found at the flea market a couple years ago. But now I have both. Anyway, nothing super special here. Just some, I, I want to say premium packaging. You know, Working Designs was known for that. Um, let's see the, the art under the disc here. Oh, yeah. What does that mean? Thunder Force 222. Huh. I have no idea. Let's look at this manual. Is this manual, this is a... Uh, like I said, this is some premium packaging, and I'm, ugh, I don't want to bend or fold anything up here. Yeah, look at that story. I got Elemental Gear Bolt. Again, again, another game that I found at the flea market, but that has some, uh, it's got packaging really, really similar to Elemental Gear Bolt. Um, the only thing different is that game comes in a double DIN uh, CD case, and this is a single DIN CD case. But anyway, it's a shooter. It's got a bigger manual than a shooter should have what is a shiny and reflective manual anyway guys thunder force 5 an excellent shooter a 3d shooter and it plays it's a 2d shooter but it has 3d graphics but on the playstation 1 okay guys this is one of those games when i found out about it i was like man get the fuck out of here that game doesn't exist it's an import game and yes it does exist so, do you guys remember Retro Game Challenge on the Nintendo DS? It's kind of an expensive game. You can get the import version. It plays on any version of DS that you have, whether it be US or Japanese. This is Game Center CX2, or in English, it would be Retro Game Challenge 2. So, this is the sequel. And the reason I got this is because, yeah, there's some shooters on here. There's one shooter in particular on this game called Gun Duel. There's a, like I said, there's a couple of them, but Gun Duel... It, I'll be honest, guys, the shooters on here play very similar to shooters that you play on like the TurboGrafx-16 or the PC Engine. Like uh, maybe if you've played Blazing Lasers or Gunhead or games like that, uh, the Star Soldier series. The shooters on here play just like those games, at least they do to me. You know, they're not exactly the same, but there's the manual, there's the cart. This only came out in Japan, but I, I can't stress this enough. This thing is not region locked. You can play this on, I play it on a new 3DS XL personally, because I like the big screen, but you can get 
uh, 2DS XL, it works on that. No region locking. You know, people will argue me to death online about it on social media. I'm telling you, if you want to upload a video of me playing this thing on my US console, but it is complete, and you can find a copy like this complete. I bought this on eBay for 35, and you might think, well, goddamn, $35 is a lot of money to pay for a Japanese DS game. You don't need any English to play it. There are some menu systems that you kind of have to tinker with, but they took me less than 10 seconds to figure out. You know, you go into a menu. If it's not if it's not what you think it is, you pull back out, and then you go into the next hole. <laughs> that's what uh, I want to say. That's what she says. But that doesn't fit. But anyway, yeah, Game Center CX2, awesome game. Um, it, it can go for a little bit of money online. Like I said, you're gonna find copies for right around. I'd pay. I paid 35. I'd pay 45 if I saw a copy for 45. Uh, especially complete like this, you can probably find cart only versions of this game for, I want to say 20 dollars or less. And I, you know they do have English translated uh, carts of this game online. The only reason I didn't get one of those carts is because they only work on an original DS or a DS Lite. And I'm trying to play them games on a new 3DS XL. For anything else, I just play it through an emulator um, just because I like that bigger screen. And the emulator is nice because you can play it on the big screen. I'm actually playing the sequel, an English translated sequel to Super Robot Ties and OG Saga Endless Frontier titled Mugen No Frontier Exceed. And it is absolutely incredible. Um, check out my live streams. I've been streaming it you know, here and there. Awesome battle system, awesome game. The team that translated that game did an excellent job and I will post more about it on YouTube and on social media. Anyways guys, Game Center CX2 on the Nintendo DS. Okay guys, so this next game, this next game is gonna be about as close as you can get to playing a PS2 era RPG on the Nintendo Switch or you know on a modern day console. I guess everything outside of playing the Grandia 2 remake, but even then that was the Dreamcast version that wasn't the PS2 version. Anyway, game called Earthlock. Super rare games actually made the game physical and say what you want about the physical companies and the, the way it's gonna affect collecting in the future and stuff like that. At least they're putting games like this out. And look at the packaging. I mean, Super Rare Games actually hooks it up. They're not super expensive. I mean, hell, they're getting sent from Europe. So, I mean, I know that costs something in shipping. You know, they don't bang you over the head in shipping. They give you little collectible cards with the game. They make it physical. They usually hook you up with a manual. As a matter of fact, let's uh, let's see what's going on up inside of this game. Uh, I mean, again, this is a, a European company. So, you know, there's companies like this that have sprouted up all over the world. You know, I'm assuming this is a you know PAL game. I'm assuming it's somewhere in Europe. But anyway, let's pop this sucker open and see if this thing comes with a manual. You know, this is a fun little RPG. I haven't played a ton, I haven't put a ton of hours in on this game yet. I have played a few hours. It's not voice acted, but you know, I'm sure they didn't budget for that. Bam, manual and reversible cover art. And you know me, whenever I see a reversible cover art, unless it's absolutely horrible. I do like to flip the cover around, and I like that this gives you spine art that isn't, or a spine color that's not just red like the regular Nintendo Switch color. Because, you know, I know that drives some collectors crazy. It's got to, because every single spine is red like that, you know? But not this one. Now this one's blue, and just make it easier to find the game if I ever want to point it out from a stack, you know? All those red spines together, you can't. I went to a game store the other day. Well, today, as a matter of fact, I'm recording this, you know, this audio. I went to a game store and they had limited run games against the wall, spined out. All I could see was a blur of red and white letters. I couldn't, I had to have the guy pull them down and ended up getting a game. Um, as a matter of fact, it was Freedom playing it on the PS4, which is a game you're about to see. Anyway, this is Earthlock, a PS2 era RPG style RPG on the Nintendo Switch. And here's the game I just mentioned. This is Freedom Planet. This is like a Sonic clone. Have not played this game all the way through, but I have sat down for about six hours and played with this game. And a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Plays like a Sonic game with a lot more variety. You can like jump and dash and spin. And I'll throw some uh, some gameplay footage like kind of in the background. That way you guys can see what I'm talking about. But yeah, boss fights are fun in this game. I, I really dig this game. And like I said, now I got a Switch version and a PS4 version, and maybe I may give one of those away. I don't need I don't need both versions for two systems. I just don't. But this game comes with a manual. Yep, full color manual, and it's got some inner cover art. So yeah, pretty good. This is like a you know thirty five dollar buy, and you know the game stores in my area, not all of them, but like half of them sell limited run games, just kind of like the same way Best Buy does. Only they get the same stock Best Buy gets, plus all the limited like stuff that's on their website. They get all that too, which is good, you know, for like Battle Garaga and Game Paradise and you know games like that. And you know, shooters, at least for me, 
Although I ordered those online when they came out for, before limited run, put them out. But you, you, you catch my drift. You can get stuff like that at a physical store. There's a note section in the back of the manual. So um, I recommend this game. Uh, you can get it online for like, you know, like 35 bucks too, I think. Um, and I think that GameStop will, not GameStop, Best Buy, they're going to end up having this. But anyway, Freedom Planet on the PS4. Okay, the last one we got here, another Dreamcast and a copy of OutRun. I got OutRun when I was at the game store just to help support my local game store. Got a good deal on it. Anyway, why do I need another Dreamcast? Well, that game Battlecrossed didn't work on my Dreamcast. Okay, that game Battlecrossed, I got it brand new from a store a couple of months ago. I forgot all about this till the other day, till I just unboxed this one. It didn't work. Didn't work a couple of months ago. Got my money back on the game. Then it happened again. And before I fired off a couple of emails to Video Games New York, I did a little bit of research, come to find out that, and let me know if I'm wrong about this, but from the research I gather, that game only works on certain board revisions of the Dreamcast. And I had to go through quite a few Dreamcasts before I found one it would work on, and that's the one that I'm going to keep as my Dreamcast. So I'm going to have another Dreamcast I'm going to sell online, or if any of you guys need another Dreamcast, let me know. It'll work with every game you throw at it, burns and everything, except... Battle Crust. So if you really want to play Battle Crust, want to play that game, don't get my uh, Dreamcast. But this one actually plays it, and it's in great condition. The controller's in great condition. Um, it's better than the controller that I'm currently using. And the video cables have an S video plug on them, which is interesting. And this could be like a placebo effect, but I feel like it makes the picture on the TV look even better. You know, I got an older flat screen in the basement, and it does, you know, comparing it, composite, S video. Um, you know, I got SCART cables um, for, you know, like Sega systems, Dreamcast, uh, Saturn, um, you know, you name it, Sega CD. But yeah, happy with this uh, Dreamcast. It actually plays Battlecrust, and that's like an R-Type clone, which is, you know, you guys saw it. I showed it in the video. Here's the little expansion uh, internet port. I think there's like these internet ports, like the, there's one that's like worth some money for the Dreamcast. I'm sure you guys know about that, but I don't really know much about it, but yeah. Yeah, I'm liking this thing. Anyways, guys, let me know what you guys got over the past uh, couple of weeks. And, um, you know, I just wanted to support my local game stores this week and buy some games. And until next time, guys, peace out. <laughs>